spending. It's not even able to access contracts. I think it's a disgrace. Barbara Davidson. To Mr Speaker, I'm just sitting here freaking out a little bit at Judith Collins' speech today where she stood up and put up this new air of concern about people struggling with living costs and people struggling with being able to afford to pay their way and live their ordinary lives. I wonder where that was, that concern, back in 2016, while well, pretty much the whole time she spent in government, actually, when she actually said publicly that the cause of child poverty was bad parenting. So I don't know where this change, well, I do know where this change has come from. She needs to say something, doesn't she? Um, so I really need to be up front and state that, because she also asked a question today, seemingly in support of the Salvation Army's suggestion around equity share and some solutions to encouraging more people to be able to own their own homes. We're currently at the lowest rate of home ownership than we have seen in a long, long time. And so she used the guise of concern for home ownership and concern for people struggling with living costs when she is really known for actually just slamming people, just blaming the individual, blaming parents for people being in struggling situations, causes of which are systemic and were able to be fixed the whole time that she had access to power and resource while she was in government and didn't do a darn blinking thing about it and in fact exasperated, exasperated the issue for the families who are struggling the very most, particularly in cutting strong employment laws and employer, employee protection laws, slashing all of those, keeping people in low-wage, precarious work situations, those are the very people who she was calling out for being bad parents. So, Mr Speaker, I did want to genuinely and authentically support the direction and the approach of the Salvation Army and a rent-to-own and progressive home ownership model, which, of course, is the Green Party's confidence and supply agreement with Labour and working really well with Minister Phil Twyford to push that through and to come up with a model. We've done it before, too, in this very country. And actually, those pro progressive home ownership models have had generational positive impacts, actually. We've seen what can happen, and we are again finally a government who will also put something in place for that. So we're working through the, what that could look like. And all that the Salvation Army were suggesting and highlighting today is that there are community iwi and hapu examples of partnerships where we can actually work together to enable more people to actually own their own <coughs> homes. That's why I'm not too worried about some of those homeowners who might actually sell off some of their investment in speculation properties, because that's fine. We want to assist more people into owning their own homes. We also want to make sure our rental properties are strong and healthy and affordable. And we also want to make sure that the balance of rights to protect tenants in this market where too often actually there's 60,000 people who are on the precipice, on the edge of being pushed into a situation of severe homelessness, living in streets, cars, garages and so forth. And so we really do want to sharpen up all along our housing continuum and I am pleased to be at the forefront of working on those issues with the Minister Phil Twyford. Um, so I really just wanted to make it very clear that while I am on one level in agreement with Judith Collins, her record is a shocker, so she doesn't actually mean it. Her reputation on how much she actually cares about people who are homeless, people who are struggling, people who are not yet owning their own homes is a shocker. How dare she stand up and pretend to genuinely care about that? I'm really proud to stand up and put our long-standing Green Party political positions and ideas that have existed, that we have campaigned long and hard on, again at the forefront of the work that we are wanting to do. It's a whole of stuff happening here in Parliament at the moment. We are continuing to put at the forefront what people are actually experiencing and the job that we have to get on and do, Mr Speaker. Those are the bold progressive policies that is why 
I am really proud to be the co-leader of the work that we have to do in working with our confidence and supply and government partners in this work of turning around a direction that that National Party had so much time to fix and so many resources, and we will do it. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The time for this debate has expired. I call on members' order of the day number one. Education, national education and learning priorities. Amendment.